please welcome Tommy Laren. I'm in the lion's den, Trevor. Uh, I'm not a lion at all. Is that like an African thing? No. Um, <laughs> welcome to the show. B before we get into it, uh, I, I know who you are because I, I, my Facebook feed has you in it. Uh, there are a lot of people who don't, so if you don't know Tommy Laren, this is a little taste of her show. The protesters are still out in force, but let's be honest, they're not protesters. They're crybabies with nothing better to do than meander around the streets with their participation trophies and false sense of purpose. This isn't for Hillary. I'm not even sure this is against Trump. It's the same thing we've seen time and time again with these so-called protesters and demonstrators. It started with the Occupy Wall Street brats, moved on to the more militant and overtly aggressive Black Lives Matter more crowd, cycled through the DNC paid violence instigators, and now here we are in November of 2016 with President-elect Donald Trump and a crowd of misfit babies formed from every failed movement, all sandwiched together to become the largest group of whiners the country has ever seen. All right. Pretty much quick, covers it, doesn't it, Trevor? Quick question, like, why are you so angry? I'm actually not that angry. It's just there's things that need to be said, Trevor, and a lot of people are afraid to in say a, them. In an angry way, I mean, you can't say you're not angry, and I mean, this is, this is what you're known for. It's a strange thing to say, I'm not angry, but that is the one thing. It's like Ellen saying, I don't like dancing. It's like, yeah, you do, Ellen, you do. <laughs> you, you, you are angry about everything, it seems. Sometimes people just need to be called in their you know, I mean, when... What, what, when you say that you're though, what in particular? Well, this is, the, this is the thing. protesting a, you know, a fair and free election, that, to me, you, you know, to get called in your a little bit. It's time to clear the streets, it's time to accept reality, it's time to move on, time to make America great again. You consider yourself a conservative? I do. Okay. I mean, I'm a millennial, so I don't really like labels, but yes, I'm conservative in thought. <laughs> Sorry, my brain, you just gave a label to say you don't like labels, but anyway, um... We exist on a spectrum. No, no, no. I mean, you're not, I, no, would you no, no. consider yourself a I, I liberal? You. That, was just, a... that was just funny. That was just funny. It was just a funny moment. I'm a millennial. Um, I surprise you. It's just, it's just funny. Um, <laughs> in terms of Black Lives Matter, like, you know, you have quite a record. For somebody who is not racist, you have to spend a lot of time saying, I'm not racist. <laughs> uh, what is your biggest issue with Black Lives Matter? I think, and I've said this many times, it started with good intentions. I think it was, it was well-intentioned. The moment that they started pushing hands up, don't shoot, which is a false narrative, proven time and time again to be a false narrative, the minute that that became their slogan, the minute that protesting turned into rioting and looting and burning and militant actions, that's when I lost respect for Black Lives Matter. Okay, but now here's my thing. Let's address each of these things one by one. When you go protesting, turning into rioting and looting, that's not a Black Lives Matter phenomenon. That is what happens when there is a protest a lot of the time. There were people who rioted and looted when teams won in Chicago years ago. It doesn't mean that they are now bad people. That's what happens. There are some bad people in every instance. Going back to Black Lives Matter, though, for you to say that, you say they have good intentions, they had the good intentions. How are you labeling out the actions of a few and condemning an entire group? Because I don't understand that. Because they subscribe to the Black Lives Matter movement. They say, we are the Black Lives Matter movement. Fry them like bacon. F the police. They're These saying are a few those people. things. These are a few people. This is not the Black These Lives are, Matter are... pro... That, that is not the platform, though. I saw it in my, my city of Dallas. I saw what a Black Lives Matter protest looked like. And I saw five fallen officers because of it. So that's I've not, seen... That's not, that's not fair and that's true. No, that's, no, 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 no. It is fair, that's, Trevor, that's, because that's the not... shooter said... Point blank shooter said he's doing this because of Black Lives Matter. Yes, and there are many things you can say. I mean, if you go outside, you can say anything about doing something because of you cannot deny that the man had mental issues as well and he was in a tough place. Just because you say the thing doesn't mean it's what it stands for, right? Because Did you you're the feel same emboldened? person. You're the same person who argued on your show that just because Donald Trump has supporters from the KKK doesn't mean he's in the KKK. So he it goes against that argument. It goes against no. that. You can't say he did it because of. No, but he, the shooter, said, yes, I Yes, but am... Black Lives Matter has never said, go out and shoot people. I'm saying, you're saying this to your audience, and I honestly do not understand where you're getting that from, just because a person... What if somebody says, I felt emboldened by Tommy Laren, and so I went out and I shot black people? Are you now responsible? But it's is not that your one, platform? Trevor, it's not one or two people. If you look at it, if you look at it, it in every city, look at the protests that have gone on in Baltimore, it? in Ferguson, in New York City, the protests that have now turned to anti-Trump protests. These are not a few people. Okay. This is mass crowds of people. Okay. They're doing it in the name of Michael Brown. They're okay. doing it in the name of Freddie Gray. They're doing it as 
the front of Black Lives Matter and the mainstream media is emboldening these people. Okay, so then let's use that same logic that you're using then and then go, police, are the police racist? Because police, in many cities, you look at Baltimore, you look at what happened in New York, you look at what happened in the case of Walter Scott, you tell me are police racist because they've been shown to harass black people unfairly, they've been shown to shoot black people when they're unarmed. Does that mean the police are racist then? Because that's the same logic you're using. It's really not, though, Trevor, because it the is. mainstream media is not emboldening them as a group. It's not. And did you know that a black man is 18.5 times more likely to shoot a police officer than a police officer is to shoot a black man? Those are statistics no one wants to talk about. Here, here's the thing. So, so let me ask you this, then. If you say, as you said when you walked out, I'm not as mean as people think I am, I'm not the person that people think I am, uh, what do you wish people would understand about you that are in another bubble? What do you wish people would understand about you on the other side? I wish that we could disagree with each other without thinking that we are bad people or ill-intentioned folks. So because I criticize a black person or I criticize the Black Lives Matter movement, that doesn't mean that I am anti-black. It does not mean that I don't like black people or that I'm a racist. It means I'm criticizing a movement. I criticize Colin Kaepernick. That doesn't mean that I don't believe in his First Amendment rights. It means that I believe in my First Amendment rights to criticize him. So it doesn't make me a bad person. It doesn't make me a racist to point out. I mean, I've never used racial slurs to address people. I've never looked down on someone because of their skin color. To me, true diversity is diversity of thought, not diversity of color. I don't see color. I go after Hillary Clinton and she is white as they come. You don't, you don't see color. So what do you do at a traffic light? Um, I don't believe in that at all when people say that. There's nothing wrong with seeing color. It's how you treat color that's more important. You're right, Here, it here's is. My, here's my thing. Like, all these points that you make are great, and I do believe that you believe them, and I don't believe anyone is actively trying. There are a few people who are trying to be bad from their point of view. Uh, but when I look at what you're saying, you say you, you're not pushing a, a racist narrative, you're not... You're criticizing. Do you really believe you're criticizing and you're not malintentioned when you say things like Black Lives Matter is the new KKK? Because you realize Black Lives Matter can't be the new KKK. The KKK is still around. <laughs> they have not vacated their premises. And most importantly, to say Black Lives Matter is the new KKK is to, like, to really, really minimize what the KKK did and what they stand for. That is not the same thing. You, surely you understand the inc incendiary Wait, uh, like, what? feeling of your comments. You know that, surely. It's controversial, but I think there are some things that need to be said. When the Black Lives Matter movement is going out with signs saying, fry them like bacon, F the police, when they're going out seeing if you see a white person target them, that is happening, Trevor. That happened in Milwaukee not too long ago. That is happening. So when that, that now is... becomes the narrative and you're starting to loot, burn, and riot, what did the KKK do? That is not, look, we'll go around in circles. Did you say, what did the KKK do? No, what did they do? When you're saying, wow. listen, listen, Trevor. Wow. Trevor. When you're saying, when there are people in the streets saying, if you see a white person beat their ass, does that not sound reminiscent of the KKK or their motives to you? Is that the narrative of Black Lives Matter or are there people who are saying that within a crowd of other human beings? There is a distinction between a movement and the people. That is something that we keep coming back to. But let's go back to what you were saying on Colin Kaepernick and, and the national anthem. This is, this is something I don't understand. And I, when I watch your videos, I go, I truly do not understand. You say... Colin Kaepernick is exercising his First Amendment rights, and you are exercising your First Amendment rights in criticizing him. Mm -hmm. So what you are saying is, you have the right to say anything you want, so shut up. No, not at all. I'm saying I don't agree with what he did. Yes. I think that he went about it the wrong way. I don't think he what understands... What is the right way? When people say that, I'm always fascinated. What is the right way? Here's so, the deal. So, so here's a black man in America who says, I don't know how to get a message across. If I march in the streets, people say I'm a thug. If I go out and I protest, people say that it's a riot. If I bend down on one knee, then it's not. What is the right way? That is something I've always wanted to know. What is the right way for a black Take person it. to Take get attention in America? Taking it out. Trevor. Taking it out on our flag and our national anthem, to me... But how? Why would you take out your perceived oppression of black people out on the national anthem and our flag? A country that you live in, a country that you benefit from, a country that people of all races have died for, have died to protect, have died for the vote, died to be enfranchised by this nation. How do you then go and disrespect the flag and the anthem of that country 
Well, what, why is that the outlet? Well, maybe you're a person who's lived and read through history and you realize that a lot of those people of every color who died for this country, some of them didn't have the rights that their fellow servicemen had when they came back to the country after and fighting. And that flag needs a lot maybe, to those folks, too. Maybe you're one of those people who realizes that the penal system in America was designed to oppress black people. It was designed to enslave people. It is a relic of slavery. Maybe you're one of those people. So what I don't understand is a guy is kneeling in the corner. I don't understand why that offends you so much. It's not even like he's trying to sing over you. If he was doing that, he's like, oh, say, oh, say, can me see? No. <laughs> he's singing. He's not, he's not doing anything that affects you. I don't understand why it gets to you. I genuinely don't. He's in a corner kneeling by himself. Why does that offend you so much? For me, I know what that flag means to me. I know what that flag means to those that are fighting for our country right now. It's bigger than a piece of cloth. It's a symbol of patriotism. Our national anthem has meant a lot to a lot of people. It's got a lot of people through very hard times. And this country, it's got its scars, it's got its wounds, it's got its, its history, but I still believe it's the greatest nation on the face of the earth, and I believe if you live in this country, you can want to better it. But to disrespect our flag and our anthem in that way and that be your outlet to get out whatever aggression you have, whether it be passive or active aggression, I disagree with it. And so he has every right to do it. That's his First Amendment rights, and I, and I agree with his First Amendment right to do it. I don't agree with what he did. So because I don't agree with what he did, then now I should shut up? Because I'm white, so I should shut up? I shouldn't be able to talk about black issues because I'm white? No one brought, no one brought up uh, white at all. I, I never said that. I don't see color. I, <laughs> I don't think that that's what the argument is. What I'm saying is, I asked you one question, and that is, how should a black person bring up their grievances? That's all I ask, how? If that's not the right way, if marching isn't the right way, what is the right way? When you talk, when what he said was, he is protesting the anthem and the flag because of the oppression of black people yes. in this country. I would like him to further explain what he's talking about when he's discussing the black oppression in this country. Which he has. Also, is it against police? Is it against the government? I'm not sure what oppression he's discussing. I would love to have him come on my show and discuss it with me. To me, when you make the flag and you make the anthem the outlet for your anger or the outlet through which you're going to protest your country that you live in and you reside in that you take $19 million a year from, I don't think that that is the correct outlet for your anger. So, so, so what is he protesting? So he's... Again, you haven't answered my question of how. <laughs> how you want so black I'm, people. I'm, I'm just asking how. And I'm asking you honestly, I'm not saying in a challenging way, I'm saying to you, I don't know the answer apart from these methods. So I would like to know if you've ever thought of a how, because you're the first person I've met who said this. I've seen this message online. I'm not labeling you as the bad person. I just want to know if you've ever thought of the how. That's all I want to know. For me, I think there are a lot of folks in this country, I being a woman, um, I didn't have rights in, after black people until women got the right to vote. But because I feel like I'm a woman and I'm marginalized in some way, I don't protest my country. I don't see what he's protesting. I would like to know exactly what he is so, protesting. It's a very... So how do you... No, no. How do you protest then? That's what I don't talking. protest because I'm not a victim. I guess we can, we can go back and forth on a lot of these issues. Um, it's, it's, a, it's an interesting place to be in because, honestly, you, you've won, you know? Like, your side has won, as you say. You know, the liberal snowflakes are, are melting in the streets as they protest. <laughs> and now I would like to know from your side, genuinely, as someone who's won, do you believe that Donald Trump will follow through on his promises? I will be a vocal opponent if he doesn't. I am not somebody that gets on the cheerleading bandwagon. If he does something I disagree with, I will discuss it. I did before I was a Trump supporter. I was critical of Trump. I was a Marco Rubio girl for a long time. And then I started to see that was gonna be our nominee and I said, it's, it's him or Hillary. A lot of Americans were in that position. Yeah. And then I got closer to the campaign and I started seeing some of the things he was saying and I started seeing the effect he was having on people and the things that he was saying that was touching people and making them he feel like He was touching they... people. Yeah, he was. He really was. Hillary could use some of that every now and then, right? Bill's a little busy. Bill's a little busy. I appreciate you being on the show. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you, Trevor. It is uh, a conversation we should continue having. Uh, having. You can find uh, Tommy's final thoughts at facebook.com slash Tommy Laren. Tommy Laren, everybody. Hey there. Thanks for watching. If you like that video, click below to subscribe or click here to delete the internet. Yes, you found the button. Please be careful. Delete the entire internet right here.